All right, so most recently we've been studying circles. Now we're going to kind of switch gears and go back to polygons. And what we're going to study specifically um, is the area of polygons. We'll also talk about the area of circles, but for a little while, uh, again, our attention is going to be focused mostly on polygons. So the first polygon that we'll focus on um, are rectangles, pretty much the easiest ones to deal with. Uh, then we'll move into parallelograms. Um, and then we'll get into triangles. And then finally, for this week, we'll get into the area of a rhombus. So that'll be covered uh, in a series, or those topics will be covered in a series of videos uh, that will roll out this week. Um, so the first thing, like I said, we'll focus on are the areas of rectangles. Um, so as usual, we'll start off with a little bit of terminology. Then we'll start looking at some postulates and some theorems that are going to help us um, solve problems. So just as a quick review, because I know that you're all pretty much familiar with the area of a rectangle um, to begin with, um, when you're talking about perimeter, you're talking about a linear measurement. So if we look at this first diagram right here, if we're trying to find the length of this object, that is a linear measurement. So say that this was one centimeter, the length of that would be to the first power because that's a linear measurement. Um, in the next one, if we're looking at the area, what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out the number of square units that we can fit inside of an object. And let's say that this is a one centimeter square by a one centimeter square. Then the area of that region is one centimeter by one centimeter, which equals one centimeter. Now remember your rules of exponents. If these are both raised to the first power, those same bases or like bases are raised to the first power. Then when you multiply them together, you add the exponents and that's why we're getting square units there when we're calculating areas. So lengths are usually measured in units. So areas are going to be measured in square units because we'll be measure, excuse me, multiplying those unit lengths together. So centimeters times centimeters is centimeters squared. So square centimeters. Meters times meters is square meters. Feet times feet, square feet. You get the idea. So let's take a look at a couple postulates here. Um, again, ones that you're probably familiar with. The area of a rectangle equals the product of its, and this can be a little bit different depending who you're talking to, but it generally means the same thing. I like to say the length and the width. Now you can also say the base and the height. And again, that terminology can come in handy, um, especially when we start looking at areas of triangles um, and we also start looking at areas of parallelograms, which we'll do pretty soon in upcoming videos. Uh, the area of a square. Now, since a square um, is a rectangle, with four congruent sides. The length and the width are going to be the exact same length. So length times width is actually going to turn into side squared here for the area of a square formula. Again, probably familiar with that. So let's just hop right into some examples here on applying these formulas. Um, example one reads the area of a rectangle is 36 square centimeters. If its height is nine centimeters, find the base. So here's a situation where instead of using length and width to talk about the dimensions of the rectangle, they're using base and height. A lot of times it's nice to draw a diagram. In this case, I don't think it's really that helpful. What I'm going to do is just write down the formula to find the area of a rectangle. So the area equals the base times the height. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to substitute in the values that I know. Uh, in this case, I know the area is 36 square centimeters, so I'm going to replace the area with 36 square centimeters. Uh, the base is what we're looking for, so I'm going to leave that blank. And then the height in this case is 9 centimeters. So to isolate B, I'm going to divide both sides by 9 centimeters. And the base in this case would equal 36 divided by 9 is 4 centimeters squared divided by centimeters leaves us with centimeters. 
Now again, since the base is just one dimension or one dimensional, um, and we're just looking for a linear measurement here, our units should just be raised to the first power, and that's what happens in this case. So B equals equal to four centimeters. And if you wanted to check that, you could multiply nine centimeters times four centimeters. That's gonna give us 36 square centimeters. Example number two, area of a square is nine square centimeters. In this case, we wanna find its perimeter. So just as a reminder, the perimeter formula for a square is four times uh, whatever the side length is. So that's gonna come in handy in just a second. So again, I'm gonna write my formula here, area equals side squared. I know the area is nine square centimeters, and I'm going to need to determine the length of the side of this square because I need that in my perimeter formula. So we'll take the square root of both sides. S will equal, square root of nine is three, Square root of centimeters squared is just centimeters, so it looks like the side length is three centimeters. I know technically when you take the square root of both sides of an equation, um, you should end up with plus or minus, but in this case we're talking about lengths, so they should be positive. All right, so now that we know what S is equal to, we can go ahead and find the perimeter. And this ends up being the perimeter is 12 centimeters. All right, don't forget to include your units in your final answers. And finally, number three, or example number three, and I guess this isn't final because we have a couple more that we need to do in just a second. But for this uh, set of examples here, example number three, the perimeter of a rectangle is 20 centimeters. If its height is four centimeters, then we want to find its area. All right, so again, it would be helpful to have the perimeter of a rectangle formula here. Um, so the perimeter of a rectangle is 2 times the base plus 2 times the height. Or again, if you're using length and width, perimeter equals 2 length plus 2 width. All right, so here we know that the perimeter is... 20 centimeters. We know that the height is four centimeters. What we don't know is the length of the base. Um, and we need the length of the base to find the area. So what we'll do is we'll use the perimeter formula in the fact that the height is four centimeters to figure out what the base is. So 20 centimeters equals two times the base plus two times the height. And in this case, I'm sorry, the height is four centimeters. So two times four centimeters. All right, so we're gonna solve this equation. 20 centimeters equals two B plus eight centimeters. And again, we're trying to solve for B, so I'm going to subtract 8 centimeters from both sides, and that's going to leave us with 12 centimeters equals 2B. Here we'll divide both sides by 2 to figure out the length of the base, and that's going to equal 6 centimeters. So now we have the two components that we need to find the area. We have the height of the rectangle and we have the base of the rectangle so we'll use those dimensions to find the area so the area is going to equal four centimeters times six centimeters which gives us a grand total of 24 square centimeters all right so we are in good shape we're going to move on to the next page of our notes and we have a couple more um, helpful postulates here. Uh, area congruence postulate. If two figures are congruent, then they have the same area, which makes sense. Um, and then the area addition postulate. The area of a region is the sum of the areas of its non-overlapping parts. Now, here's why these postulates or where these postulates can come in handy. If you look at example number four, specifically the figure that you're given, it looks like that figure is kind of made up of 
some rect some like rectangular parts so to find the area of regions like this what i like to do is to break them up into regions that i can find the area of so let me see like i might drop in perpendicular right here and now what i have are a bunch of rectangles i have three to be specific three rectangular regions that i can easily find the area of and then once i find the area of each of the regions what i can then do is just find the total area by adding up each of the individual regions and that's going to give me the area of the total region so let's kind of break this up and so we can talk about each of the regions a little bit easier so this is region one we'll call it this is region two and this is region three so all we need are the lengths and the widths of each of the regions and we should be in good shape if you look at region one and region two those are congruent rectangular regions so they're going to have the same area so for region one the dimensions that we need are five by four and again they're both rectangles so we know for region one i'm actually right in region two the dimensions are five by four so to get the area that's going to be very easy region three it's going to take us a little bit of work to find both of the dimensions um, one of the dimensions is eight okay which we can clearly see up there so this is going to be eight by something so now what we want to do is we need to find this length that I'm highlighting in blue right now. Okay, so I'm going over that in blue. And I can look at the other side as well, so that's what we're looking for. So it looks like if we can find the sum of all the pieces that make up that length, then we should be good. So it looks like that is 6, this piece is 5, and then that small piece on the bottom is 2. So it looks like we've got 11 and two which would be 13 so this entire or the length of this entire side is 13 units so it looks like the dimensions of that rectangle region number three or rectangular region number three is eight by 13. so to find the total area we're just going to find the area of each region and we're just going to add them up so the total area is going to equal well, since these two regions, 1 and 2, are the same, I'm just going to multiply 2 times 5 times 4. Because I have two regions that have the same area, and to find the area of each of those regions, we multiply the length times the width, which is 5 times 4 in this case. And then I'm going to add in the area of region 3, which is 8 by 13. So when we do this out, the total area will end up being 142 square units so they don't specify units here so i'm just going to write square units all right so that's how you would find the area of that region take a look at example number five um, and then this will be the last one that we go over in this video says this is the rendering for a deck on the back of a house consecutive sides are perpendicular what is the area of the deck we want to round that to the nearest tenth of a square foot and then the average cost for labor and materials is 35 dollars per square foot how much would it cost you to construct this deck okay so this is a pretty practical um, question especially when you become a homeowner and you want to do um, household projects uh, so I will say that this diagram is definitely not to scale, and you're going to see that in just a minute. All right, so the way that I'm going to attack this problem um, is very similar to the way that I attacked example number five. I'm going to start to break up this region into more manageable regions. So what I did is I decided to go like this and make two rectangular regions. So the way that I found the dimensions, let me grab the highlighter real quick for this region that I'm gonna highlight here. And again, you're gonna quickly see why this is not to scale. All right. I took 13.9 feet and subtracted 12.4 feet. And that should give me this missing dimension right here. So when I did that, I ended up with 1.5. So this is 1.5 feet. 
So again, clearly not to scale. All right, so let's find the area of this region that I highlighted in yellow. It's 15.1 feet by 1.5 feet. So the area of this region is 22.65 square feet when you do out that product. We need to find the area of the second region. So that's this region that we have below. All right, so the dimensions of this are 12.6 by 12.4. So the area is 12.4 times 12.6. And when you do that out, you end up with 156.24 square feet. So to find the answer to part A, we just need to add up uh, the areas of each of the regions. That's going to give us the area of the total deck. And that's going to give us 178.9 square feet when we add those up. And then to find the total cost... We're told that we're getting charged $35 per square foot. So the cost is going to equal the area times the labor rate. I should say the parts and labor rate. So the cost will equal the area 178.9 square feet times $35 per square foot. So the square feet go away, which leaves us with just dollars. So the total cost for that deck when we multiply 178.9 times 35 is roughly $6,261.50. All right, so I hope this video was helpful. Um, we're going to follow this up with you know a couple more videos um, that are going to show you how to determine the area of other polygons as well. I hope this video was helpful, um, and we will see you in the next one.